today's meditation time. Um, the inspiration for our minutes together today come from the path of karma yoga. The last several times we've been together, we've talked a lot about this idea of peace, peace in ourselves, peace in our world, peace in our relationships, all inspired by the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so I thought that a really natural place to take us next is down the path of karma yoga. And so let's get settled where we are, lying down, seated, whatever feels right for you, and then gently allow your eyes to close. And as you do that, let's just settle in with an even inhale and exhale. So as long as it takes you to breathe it in, use the same amount of time to breathe it out. Inhaling together, exhaling release. Inhaling together, exhaling release. And then from there, you just keep a rhythm of breath that feels good. Your breath should be nurturing, but it should also be an anchor. It should be cleansing, but it should also be peaceful. So kind of find your rhythm, find your balance between those two sides. And then we're gonna ask the mind to clear itself just a little bit. The thoughts will still come, but what we wanna do is not follow them out. Just let the thoughts come in and then let them drift away. And so in this day and age, the idea of karma yoga, it gets a lot of really distorted definitions and views and ideas. But what I'd like us to do is I'm gonna ask us each, including myself, a few questions to see if we really understand this path of karma yoga and how it can manifest in our lives. And before I ask those questions, I want you just to imagine when you breathe in all the nourishment, all the nutrients that you're taking in from the trees, from the flowers, from nature, from grass. And so then as you breathe out the stuff you don't need, it turns into something wonderful. That carbon dioxide turns into exactly what those trees and flowers and grass and nature need to thrive. They pull it in, they draw the nutrients they need, and then they exhale the things they don't need, but turn it into something incredible. So it is this beautiful energy exchange back and forth. And the things that I bring into myself, I turn them into something good before I let them go. We often think of carbon dioxide as a stuff that's bad that we don't need. But when you think about it as exactly what nature needs, it really is something beautiful, something nourishing. That in its essence is karma yoga. Karma yoga is not about getting what you deserve. It's not about paybacks as our world has kind of distorted it to be. It is about an energy exchange. And you know when you're in the presence of people who just give you good and kind and nurturing energy, you pull it in and all that makes you wanna do is bubble over and send a more good and kind and nurturing energy out. And at the same time, you also know when you're in the presence of complaining, negative, maybe even narcissistic people, and we've all encountered people like that in our path, it's really difficult to let their energy come into us and turn it into something good. What often happens is we send right back out exactly what we brought in. But the path of yoga teaches us that in between the bringing in and the sending out, there's a shift. And we shift even the negative into something good, just like carbon dioxide. We shift it and we turn it into something positive and nourishing. And then we breathe it back out or we say it or we act. That's karma yoga. So I want us just to settle in. I'm gonna ask you these few questions and I'm asking them to myself as well. But before I do that, let's just take another slow, deep breath in together. And exhale, let it go. And a long, slow, deep breath in together. And exhale, let it go. And I ask you these questions. Don't worry if the answer does not readily come. It's more important that we just keep asking and let the question just kind of settle. I'll ask it twice. 
then I'll grow quiet for a few breaths and then we'll go on to the next one and just see what thoughts, what mind patterns, what thought patterns start to bubble up and see what connection you have. And maybe the answers will start to come from that. So as you continue to breathe, I'd like each of us just to think about this question. How can I personally serve the world around me? How can I personally serve the world around me? What unique talents do I have to offer to the world? What unique talents do I have to offer to the world? How can I be selfless in my service? How can I be selfless in my service? Meaning, I'm not expecting anything back. Selfless. Do I have the capacity to share love, compassion, and forgiveness unconditionally? Do I have the capacity to share love, compassion, and forgiveness unconditionally? What beliefs or limitations about my ability to serve do I need to release? What beliefs or limitations about my ability to serve do I need to release? And then let's bring it right back to this moment. What can I do today? What can I do today? And again, I don't expect you just to have all the answers to all the questions right now. I just want them to kind of settle into you and start to just prick little parts of your heart and your spirit to begin thinking about our act of service to our world, the small intimate world around us, the larger world around us. And by asking the questions and proposing the idea that all of these things are attainable, they're possible, even though our limiting mind makes us think this is really out of reach. I don't have talent. I don't know how to be selfless. I've got a lot of limiting thoughts in my mind from just my past and, and my relationships. Who am I to think that I have something to offer and to serve? It's those ideas that will make us think this is not attainable and that it is not possible. But there's a gift inside of each of us that no one else matches. No one else possesses it. It's our unique contribution to the world. And your world may be your family, it may be your office staff. It may be a club or an organization or a group that you're a part of. But within that world, you've got something to give. And so what I'd like us to do in our moments of quiet for these next couple of minutes is keep picturing us breathing and the trees breathing and the plants breathing and then the, just see it beautiful exchange between the two and even the stuff that I don't see is very worthy my carbon dioxide it is a gift to every blooming part of nature they need what I have to offer with my exhale they need it to survive to grow to thrive so if you have any limiting thoughts or negative thoughts about your contributions, see the trees and imagine where they'd be 
without your breath. So let's just sit together for these next couple of moments, breathing in and breathing out. A perfect reminder of the gift we each have to offer. Let that sound just bring your awareness back to the space that we're sharing together. And just kind of check in with your thoughts, see where your mind tried to go, see what arose in your thought patterns. And if you were a part of our meditation time on Sunday night, you remember the story of the two islands of the people with the, the limitation in their arms. And if you weren't here, I would encourage you to listen to Sunday, January 22nd's meditation because in the same way that our carbon dioxide is a seemingly negative thing, it really is something beautiful to those that need it. And so whatever limitations you see about yourself, I talked about this on Sunday night, maybe we can use those limitations for good. And then all of a sudden we'll start to realize they're not limitations after all. There's a quote by Yoko Ono that I wanna close us with because I think it really gives us some some rooting and some power and some inspiration going forward. She said, a dream you dream alone is a dream. A dream you dream together with others becomes reality. Karma yoga is not something that we do isolated because what's happening is you're doing it where you are. I'm doing it where I am. Someone else on the same path is doing it after they listen to this recording where they are. And then we have this forest of trees beginning to grow because all of us collectively are breathing out what the trees need. In the same way, each of us giving our unique gift in service, selfless service to our world. It doesn't have to be great acts. Mother Teresa said all it takes is doing small acts with great love. We're not trying to be famous. We're just trying to make an impact and transform our world to a place of peace, one breath at a time. Namaste.